Fire from the planet This one straight to a boy neck You better pray so it no connect Left by a shield and a friend And you P45 if you can it Fire from the planet Me God I'd like to take this time to welcome King and Queen Genius to Fire Station. Queen Genius. Can you tell the Fire Station how you got to be who you are today? Well, for me, um, I would say um, the inspiration of music um, was coming from my late father mm -hmm. and late brother. Um, growing up as a young child, my father was into music, so um, they're taking their inspiration, my brother's inspiration where he was in a sound system, um, and then um, from there, um, somebody had approached me to um, go on the radio, so from there, um, that's how I started my music on the radio. Um, I went on the radio 1988. Okay. Been on the radio since 1988. So was you playing at parties and things I like that? I was playing at parties, I was playing at events, I've even played abroad. Okay. I played in Belgium, France, um, uh, somewhere else. I can't remember, but um, yeah, I played at different places. Okay. And with me now, music started for me at an early age. I had a band called Natural Vibes, and um, before that I was doing, basically introduced to music from by, by my uncle. I used to watch him play his guitar and basically Play, um, play, record, play one record 20 times over <laughs> till the whole house got tired of one record and <laughs> I, got it. I said yeah I, can, I, I like this thing called music and he bought me a little guitar and um, long and short of it that um, he said I said to him one day I'd like to, I'd like to do what you want to do he says across the road there's a music school you can go there when I, when I went inside they liked what was going on and um, I ended up in Penge <laughs> at some um, festival they was doing and um, they called me on the stage and said come to do something on stage and done that, liked it, everyone else liked it and then that was my introduction to music and okay. from there we went on to um, build a band, sound system, got involved in working with various record shops, after record shops became distribution and then um, regarding the radio now, my radio started in 19, I think it's 87 or 88, the first station was a station in Brighton called Festival Radio, my friend John Missouri invited me to come on his show, but it was like a Rodiger, it was like a Rodiger and Barry G, it, it was a clash, okay. <laughs> so basically as you heard Rodiger and Barry G, it was me and John Missouri on the radio clashing one for one on the radio yeah. and that's how my radio situation started so after festival radio now went on to um i was introduced to i was introduced to dennis rose so i went on to um genesis mm -hmm. in the 80s and then from there went to various radio stations on and off during that time when um my production started the same time so it's a lot of your production of music, you know, yeah. music production, worked with various artists, you know, mm -hmm. um, worked with first first production, first um, actual paid session I done was a guy that called um, Joseph Cool. He's got he had a group called Steel Cool. Mm -hmm. The tune to book Poor is a Crime. Yeah, he was I was introduced to him by a friend of mine. So he's got an uncle that's from come over from Jamaica mm. and wanted some one needed a musician to build some tracks. So we went down to Patrick Donegan's studio in Battersea and 
from there it was just yeah <laughs> <laughs> never stopped never stopped we can go on from here to next week <laughs> <laughs> how did your family feel about your career choice um my mom was okay with it my dad was uh, my dad was a typical caribbean person Waiting with a candle for you. I think music can do anything for you. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, go get a job, man. Mm -hmm. yeah, one of those ones, yeah. I think you went for the same thing, eh? Yeah. Um, well, look, being um, when I told my parents that I was on the radio, well, they never really said nothing, you know. Being that was the first one out of everybody to do so, to do is go on the radio. So I never really got the hassle like that, but um, I want, growing up I wanted to be a singer mm. and there and then parents would, you know, ask us what do we want to be and I said I want to be a singer, well I never heard the last of it, mm. especially from my mother, not in a horrible way but she just said um, well, what can music do, I mm. need to look, do, look for something else. So um, I was kind of disappointed because it's singing I, I really wanted to do. Um, so kind of got put off yeah. in, um, doing it, singing. Did you ever sing? Well, um, I didn't, but due to the inspiration of a few artists um, who I can name, um, Glenn Slowly mm -hmm. and, and some other, a few artists, um, they heard me one day kind of harmonising. Mm -hmm. And um, they said, you said to me, oh Queen, you sound really good there. Um, you need to, um, you know, do something about it. And also an inspiration of a partner yeah. who just encouraged me and said, no Queen, you can do this. Mm -hmm. So I've done a couple of harmonising for some of the artists there. And, um, um, and I get encouragement from them to say, look, you need to do something about it. Mm -hmm. you need to sing, you need to practice. So for me it's been practicing so that I can maybe do a song for myself. Okay, so you are working. Yeah. Okay. Who did you work who have you worked for? Who did you harmonize for? Um um the yeah, artist Glenn Slowly, mm -hmm. um Mikey Sovereign, mm -hmm. um Father Dunn. Mm -hmm. Who else is there? Um that's it. Big question now. <coughs> Why is music important to you? Why is music important to me? Mm. I grew up with music. Mm. There's times that I wanted to give up the music business because of, you know, the negative side of things with the music industry. I never could. I never could get away from music. Yeah. So it's like embedded in me. It's like... <laughs> Your soul. It, it's like my soul, yeah. <laughs> How about you think? Um, again, being brought up in the music, um, music just inspires me. Um, I just love listening to music, I mean proper real music, not these mm -hmm. kind of gym back music that we're hearing today. Yeah. And sometimes when you listen to the lyrics in the songs and the music, the rhythm itself, just brings a feeling, mm -hmm. a real good feeling, and you know the music is proper. Yeah. So for me, Sangu King is the soul, in the soul. Yeah. Yeah. What were your influences during your journey as a, as a DJ? Um, influences are, I suppose, um, I think looking at um, other, I think looking at artists, and to be honest, I didn't really think I would be a DJ, you know what I mean? Even though I love the music, I didn't think I would get into the music. So as I said, when I was approached to come and do the music, it was like a great deal to, yeah. to, to, to go on the radio and get the chance to play the music that you want to play yeah. and to entertain the people and the listeners that are listening at the same time. So it, to me it was just like, wow, great, mm -hmm. I'm on the radio, I'm on the air. And the experiences I've got from listeners who phone up and encourage me, until this day, I still get people that listen to my show. Um, 
I get even artists that are tuning in, like um, Pachita Latouche, yeah. Lovers Ricardis, yeah. who listens to my show. And she inspires me, she encourages me, Glenn Slowly, other artists yeah. I've interviewed in the past as well, like Winston Reedy, mm -hmm. Susan Cadogan, um, the In Crowds. <laughs> so it's people like them that inspire me to do this. To make it. Yes, the late great junior Mervyn. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I'm just just grateful, glad that I'm doing this, and I'll still continue. Yeah. Okay. Me? Um, yeah, with the radio now, it's just like I don't know. I was just, I was just always drawn to playing good music. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, back in the day. Well, back in about. about five, six, seven years ago. I done a dance with you, but it wasn't really, it was like, it was like, yeah, but nah, it's not for me. <laughs> so I went back to my roots, yeah. which I was always with my roots anyway. And um, I find that I get a lot of music sent to me and half of them I don't touch. So I find that the, the music, the quality of music now has gone downhill. Even with the reggae music and surface gone down here, it's not the same, there's no soul in there, it's like, it doesn't feel like, <laughs> you know, you know, and even, what I enjoy about this journey as well is interviewing artists, I've interviewed big artists, I've interviewed small artists, I've interviewed big producers, small producers, um, there's a few that stick, stick, sticks out to me very well, it's like, when I interview when I interview a producer like um, Cleavy from Steel and Cleavy, mm. it's a joy, you know. Um, the other day I interviewed Wayne and Souls, it was a joy, mm. you know, just to hear the history. I need to sit back like this, just listening to the history. Yeah. You probably said about three, four <laughs> questions, and <laughs> and the interview lasts four hours, three, two, two hours, or. Wow. Sometimes you have to come back next week and yeah. you say two questions and yeah, it's mm -hmm. a joy. It's a joy to know to be to know the history of, of the music as well, you know? Yeah. yeah. Would you mind sharing the current struggles you feel a, a DJ may face? <sighs> the struggle from a DJ, that's a very good question. The struggle that I find, not even myself and Queen, but there's other DJs that um, I mean, the struggle is the fight from other DJs. Mm -hmm. What we call them hype DJs, you know, the DJs that, you know, they think that they think they're too big or better than the other, and you find that they're what's the word? Full of themselves is the word, or yeah. Some of them are just like like competing, and um, there's no unity. Yeah, no. Yeah. And um, for me, it's. We shouldn't be competing. We should be sort of like working together. As yeah. a, it doesn't matter who. We should just all work together. But there's a big fight, um, and me, I personally don't like it. And that's not even with just radio DJs. Um, that goes for recording artists. Some of them think they're better than the next one. That's for producers. You know, mm. we should be able to just in the music business and learn to live. Mm. You know, you know, learn to just live together, work together. Mm. You know, we're not doing that. No. Yeah. And can I just also say, being as a female, yeah, yeah a female DJ, I get I get a fight big time. Mm -hmm. Um and sometimes um I get fight from other females, but not only that, males too. Yeah. Um and Really and truly, I'm just saying that we shouldn't really. Me, a person as a female, and there's yeah. a few others out there. Um, what I'm saying is that we, sh as a female, we shouldn't get fight down mm -hmm. because how I taught to learn my music was from my father and brother. So there's times when I've gone out there and played out, and I, when I mean I get a fight, I get a fight, um, and um, I can King can actually tell you for himself, um, I've gone and played at an event mm -hmm. and there was a male <laughs> DJ um, 
play the music. So they called, they called me to come on. And then as soon as I come on, I just kind of just warm up the crowd and got the crowd going. Afterwards, the male DJ came up to me and he said, oh, I embarrassed him. I didn't embarrass him. <laughs> I just played yeah. music, that was it. Yeah. But for him to come and say that to me, that I embarrassed him. What was that about? I thought I would stand. No. So, um, so I, I do get a fight. Mm. And it's not the first time. And to me, I'm just saying, we, 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 we as females, we shouldn't get that. No. Same with males get fight too. I'm mm. saying it shouldn't be that way. Yeah. Right. You what know, struggles have you faced, King? Struggles? Wow. The struggles that I've faced in the business is being ripped off. Um, yeah, being ripped off is the biggest one. You know, promises. You know, on the radio side, sound system side, not being, you know, letting like others, you know, I find that a lot of these sound systems, um, sound systems have like their cleats, you know, yeah. they work with their cleats of people, so if you're not within that cleat, you don't get a blight, same with the red DJ, if you're not in a cleat, mm -hmm. you don't get a blight, same with as a recording artist, if you're not in that cleat, you don't get a blight, and we shouldn't be a cleat thing, yeah. yeah, I thought there was a fight here, but the fight is not just here, yeah, um, there's fighting. There's a fight in Florida with the same thing. If you're not in amongst that clique, you, you know, yeah. same thing. Yeah, too much clique. Yes. Too much clique. We're supporting each other to rise. Yes. <laughs> Do you believe in the Most High? Of course, definitely. He's if, first and foremost. If so, how does he affect your work? He. The Most High inspires me, you know, when I'm down and I look to the Most High, mm. it's like, it's an energy boost. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> Definitely. Um, most High inspires me. Pray to the Most High every day without fail, morning, yeah. afternoon, evening. Um, and, um, you know, as King just said, when you feel down, just say a little prayer and then you just be lifted up again. So for me, that's my inspirement at the most day. Yeah. 24 hours. If you could give advice to an aspiring DJ, what would it be? What would you say? I would say it would um, just do what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, be, be yourself. Be yourself, and um, if you find that you're struggling, just keep carrying on. Mm. Or just seek advice yeah. from somebody that's professional at music. Mm. That's not going give, to give you the hype, mm. but just ask for encouragement. Mm. You know. And don't be hype, because <laughs> yeah. none of them are hype. You know? <laughs> they go on um, Facebook and have, um, you know, big up yourself. Yeah. With all four four people they log it in or ten people log it in or twenty five people log in, they think they're the best things in the but it doesn't work like that. Yeah. No, it doesn't. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about your tell not a little bit. Tell me about your production. My production? Yeah. Okay. Um my productions. My first official productions. Yeah. I've done production in public. First official official production was 1990 something, yeah, with uh, a song by Nicky Dread called um, Show Me the Way and San Dino Jelly to Me Up. That was released in Jamaica. Yeah, I've had some before that. Well, it, was on a, it was on the next man's label, and then, you know, they start claiming it's theirs so and whatnot, whatnot. So, the struggles. Yeah, yeah, the struggles. <laughs> And then after that now, I can put albums upon albums upon albums upon albums upon albums upon albums. Tell I've got a catalogue of, of uh, when I counted my catalogue, release catalogue, I've got about, uh, what did I say, 21 albums. Of your tunes? Yeah, 
of not my pro okay. no, my yeah my production yeah. my productions my personal songs I have three songs out there what was your first one song it was on a rhythm called the classic lovers rhythm called um, yesterday medley okay yeah and then I had a song after that called stuck on you and then I got one up now called bandulo Okay, and your first album was? First, my first various artist album, so I'm still working on my album. Okay. My first various artist album is an album called, where is it up there? Yeah. Rhythm Train Volume 1. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have to look the way. I have to look up there. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Have you been surprised at the response from the UK music listeners? Yeah. Because most, to be honest, a lot of my listeners were from overseas, but now I've noticed one harmony is getting recognised in the UK now. Mm -hmm. We was more get our, our stuff is more based on the US market, mm -hmm. so we had a lot of US DJs playing our stuff from Florida, New York. Um, what have you got currently in the pipeline? Okay, well I've got in the pipeline, I, I have actually got an album that is just been released called Breaking Up to um, Breaking Up Meets the Queen with him. It's a two rhythm track album, seven 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 artists on each rhythm, so yeah. a 14 track. I've actually now starting to mix um, a Sandy Una album. We went on to the ancestors a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. working on his album. Mm -hmm. um, working on my own album. I've got a dub album working on. I've got so much stuff working on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna look. We're gonna look for you. The, the viewers are gonna be looking for. Uh, looking forward to a lot of stuff coming from the One Harmony camp. Okay. Yeah, um, we have a Father Don album come working on. Wow, there's a lot of stuff coming out. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Queen? What have you got in your pipeline? Um, for me, well, maybe next year. Hopefully he's going to say that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And then next year, hopefully I have my album ready. So yeah, yeah then um, basically carry on with boosting up the One Harmony. You know. Tell me about One Harmony. One Harmony. Okay, so basically the record label started in unofficially started in 1990, so it was a, it was a four or five, unofficially, officially 2000, yeah. 2001, 2002, officially, yeah. Um, I've always wanted to work with artists, the production is something that I like doing, I like making original music, I like, you know, lifting the art. I like having a platform for the artist to work with. Some places where you go, the producer will say, no, my wife a song like this. I want a song like that. Mm. I don't work with that. Mm. A lot of producers that come and there's um, producers, sorry, singers that come and they says, do you like it? Do you like it? Do you like it? I say, you sound good. Mm. Oh, I think I need to change it. I think I need to change it. Do you think? Mm. If you're comfortable, I'm comfortable. Yeah. Because if, uh, Artists are not comfortable with the producer, it's not, not going to work. Mm. So better both of you work together as a mm. team. Yeah. Everything I do is teamwork. Yeah. We have to work together as a team. You know. Yeah. So we've got that side. Radio stations started from 2004. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was working on an internet radio station called Invincible Radio at the time. And at the same time, me and a friend of mine said we want to start a radio station. He wanted to start his, I want to start mine. Mm. So we used to be, we used to be up till four, five, six o'clock in the morning trying to work out how to start this radio, this radio encoder. Yeah. <laughs> this time it was shoutcast, <laughs> and this time we had dial-up. Yeah. So another dial-up. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and we're trying to figure out how we're we gonna get this thing to start. So, Get that phone bill. Oh, so there's it. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
all right, we're not going to do it this way. Mm-hmm. We're gonna we're gonna go the proper route. Now we're gonna get a proper line, mm-hmm. got a proper line, and then we said, okay, so we need a proper line. Dial-up can't work. And we've just been experimenting until we get to the station. Then yeah, one album is launched with me one on the radio station yeah. <laughs> every single day of the week doing my thing. Then it was 2000. We went. I went on to various radio stations. Mm-hmm. And then everyone's looking at me, oh, you know, 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 And then the last radio station that we were on, Queen, me and Queen spoke and we said, you know something, we're going to make this thing proper now. Mm-hmm. So even though 2004 was launched with 100 radio, mm-hmm. it was 2000 and we actually started taking DJs, by that time we started taking DJs, but this is the twist, yeah, a lot of DJs were from the UK, Okay. we started to syndicate, because there was this thing that was ringing in my ears of people, of people in America syndicating, but I found this out after I'd done the syndicate, so I used to have my friends around the world, the world uh, Eastern East Lincoln, they said come, I can syndicate your show for you, rare, rare, this, that, that, and that, and that, and that. Until eventually we said, yeah, this can work. And it did work. People said they like hearing shows from Jamaica and they like hearing shows from, from um, America. We had news, we used to broadcast news from the Caribbean and stuff like that. And people said, yeah, we like this. Mm-hmm. And that's when, from then to now, we're still doing the same format. Okay. Until we're now finding stations in the UK now are syndicating the shows. Something that I've done back in 2007-8, we started to syndicate shows. So it's like we were like years ahead of the rest. It's catching up now. Yeah. Yeah. It was just catching up now. But you've got more coming. Yes. See us in. Yes, we've got more coming. We've got um, we've got a TV station mm-hmm. coming. Well, I've had that before. Yeah. I was on a network called Livestream, and now we decided to take it up again because everyone wants to see visuals now. You know, nobody doesn't want to necessarily just hear. They want to see something now. So, yeah. All right, let me bring this back out the forefront. Yeah. So I decided now I'm going to start launching my TV station. Yeah. And we're going to run like documentaries, music videos, interviews, and stuff like that. Mm. You know? Yeah. Just, just to try and bring in content and. Yeah. Sounds good. Sounds yeah. good. How are you feeling about that, Queen? <laughs> well, I'll just support him. I'll be there. You know, standing behind him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's true. So um, it's going to be on a subsidiary um, domain website, which is going to be One Harmony Reggae TV dot network, or you can go on to our um, website One Harmony Radio dot com and click on the TV link. Um, what we're looking for as well, we're looking for music videos, or even documentaries, or even interviews from people, so they can email. One harmony music at gmail.com with and basically you know if they want to ask questions to ask questions if they want to send on some videos send on some videos mm-hmm. preferably like mp4 formats or youtube links because we can still work with youtube links and stuff like that but it's a platform that basically is put there to basically big up artists mm-hmm. you know it doesn't even have to be an artist you could be like someone that is a presenter on radio and you know want to do what you guys do you know basically yeah. interview interview people we don't we put that on the, the platform because it's not just about a man jumping up and down and say yes jara stafara yes my girl this and my girl that yeah. you know people want to see like a regular documentary from probably king Tubby, uh, mm. <laughs> you know is Make, it, are we just going are we is it just the reggae genre or are you going to put it's just the reggae jo- reggae genre the reason why i picked the reggae, reggae genre mm. i still feel reggae has been bypassed 
everybody wants to basically water it down. Mm. You know, we have dancehall, which turns trap dancehall. Mm. We have one drop reggae that sounds a bit plastic. Mm. It's not like from back in the day, whether it's digital or live, it's, it's like it sounds plastic. There's no oomph to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah so, so that's basically what we did. So basically, the, as a repeat the platform again, it's One Harmony Reggae TV dot network. Yeah. yeah. Is it up and running now? It's up. It's up. Basically, not the site is actually in um what do you call it in in construction at the moment. Yeah, but the actual stream is actually running at the moment. It's actually test streaming, test streaming at the moment. Okay. Yeah, so by say a week or so, we'll get up and running on the website. Yeah. <laughs> How can the Firewood family keep in contact with you? Well, your family. So <laughs> <laughs> you can keep in contact anytime, but but um, the Firewood um, Firewood viewers, they can catch. They can um, log on to oneharmonyreggae.com or they can like I said, log on to the TV site oneharmonyreggaetv.network um, we, um, There's the music website has been under construction which is one harmony radio music one harm, sorry, one harmony music yeah. at, uh, dot com and then I'll say for one in, in, in more information oneharmonymusicachievement.com Please feel free to make a shout out to your well wishes. Okay, I would like to big up first and foremost my wife, who is um, mm. next to me. Um, the Most High Himself, mm. the Most High, would be doing this. Mm. Yeah, and everybody that knows me. <laughs> I, I feel I said everybody that knows because if I start coming up names now, <laughs> we'll probably be here till next Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Can you think of anyone to add to that, Queen? Um, mostly I want to say thank you to you guys for mm. coming to us. Yes. You know, we appreciate it. Um, most of all, I want to say thank you to the Most High, because without the Most High, we wouldn't be here. Mm. And I want to say thank you to King, because he supports me 24-7. And thank you to everybody else who encourages me um, with the music and uh, um, encourage me to do my singing and the talk shows that I do mm. on the radio to inspire others, you know, to encourage them to see what's going on in the world today. As you can see what's going on, there's a whole of stuff going on. So we all need uplifting. Every one of us need uplifting. That's right. Yeah. We must give them, must give them the time that we're on the radio as well. So yeah. um, Queen is on the radio between the hours of um, this year person well, show on it. 12, Twelve to three, to three on a Sunday. Sunday. Mm -hmm. And then we both do a show nine to twelve on a Saturday morning. morning. Um, then we Sunday evening, 8 to 11, mm. and then we do Monday afternoon, 5 to 8, and that's on www.oneharmonyradio.com. And I also do um, free show, a number of free shows. I do a show 3 to 6 on a Wednesday afternoon, which is the, called the International Vintage Reggae Show. Then I do another one on Friday, the International Reggae Talk Show, which basically is a compil compilation maybe of like interviews I've done or compilations of music industry, standard music industry um, stuff. And then there might be some reggae industry stuff there. And that's on a Friday, 4 till 6. And then my Saturday show is 3 till 6 on a Saturday um, afternoon, stroke evening. And that's broadcasting via another four, 13 networks. 14 is coming up next week, so there's 14 networks. So basically, I'm broadcasting by One Harmony and 14 other stations on that one. That's wow. a big show. Yeah. And then Sundays, I do a soul show, soul classics. Really? Yeah. yeah. Real mellow and soft soul classics. You know, just to wind down your day. <laughs> <laughs> that's between the hours of 6 and 8. So. Okay. Yeah, I'm very busy on the radio. You are. You've got a very good memory too. Yeah. Yeah, I have. I have. I've got a very good memory. I think I have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
And we're also looking for presenters, so if you're a presenter out there, mm. yeah, you can just email oneharmonyradio at gmail.com. Yeah, and then we'll get back to you and yeah. If you, can, you can do it in the comfort of their own home. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it has been an amazing honour interviewing you. On behalf of Fire Red Station and the Fire Red family, I'd like to say thank you. No problem. Thank you. Too. Big up Fire Red Station. They have a blast up in the nation. <laughs> I know something. This is not version. This is not excursion. Fire Red Station. <laughs> mm. Go on. Go on.